Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on our channel Z Media today. We'll be presenting a list of famous celebrities who have passed away with announcements of their passing, made in the last 24 hours. As always we have special tributes in our today's top headline section. Before we proceed we kindly ask for your support by giving this video a thumbs up let's begin thank you. Carmen Sevilla, the iconic Spanish actress and singer, has left an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. She passed away on June 27, 2023, at the age of 92. Carmen Sevilla was more than just a star, she was a force of nature. Born in Seville, Spain, she began her career as a dancer in the 1940s, but it was her captivating film roles that truly catapulted her to stardom. By the 1950s, she had become one of Spain's most beloved and highest paid actresses. In 1958, she starred in Vengeance, a film that earned an Oscar nomination for Best Foreign Language Film. However, it was her portrayal of Mary Magdalene in the epic King of Kings that introduced her to Hollywood audiences, showcasing her remarkable talent as both an actress and a singer. Her versatility was further highlighted with her American television debut on The Ed Sullivan Show. In 1972, she graced the screen as Octavia in Antony and Cleopatra. Despite her international success, Carmen never forgot her roots and continued to star in Spanish cinema throughout the 70s. By the 90s, Carmen had transitioned to hosting television specials and became a beloved presenter on Spanish TV. Her radiant smile and immense talent left a lasting impression on audiences. In 2004, she was honored with the Medal of Honor from the Circulo de Escrever Simon of Raficos. As we bid farewell to this golden star, we remember Carmen Sevilla. Her legacy lives on, inspiring generations of artists. Bill Cobbs. He graced our screens for nearly five decades, leaving an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. Born in Cleveland, Ohio in 1934, Bill Cobbs' journey to stardom was anything but conventional. Before he found his way into acting at the age of 36, he held various positions in the U.S. Air Force, IBM, and even worked as a car salesman. But destiny had other plans for him. Cobbs made his TV debut in the educational series Vegetable Soup, but it was his role in the 1974 film The Taking of Pelham 123 that truly launched his cinematic career. Over the years, he accumulated an impressive 200 film and TV credits. In 1992, Cobbs starred alongside Whitney Houston and Kevin Costner in The Bodyguard. As her manager, Bill Devaney, he left an unforgettable impression. And who can forget his turn as the night guard Reginald in Night at the Museum? Cobbs brought depth and humor to every character he portrayed. His talent extended beyond the big screen. In 2020, he earned a daytime Emmy for his role as Mr. Hendrickson in Amazon Prime Video's Canadian series Dino Dana. His TV credits included memorable appearances on The Sopranos, ER, and The West Wing. On Tuesday, June 25, 2024, Bill Cobbs passed away peacefully at his home in California, surrounded by his cherished loved ones. As a beloved partner, big brother, uncle, surrogate parent, godfather, and friend, he touched countless lives. And so, we bid farewell to a true legend. Bill Cobbs, your talent, wisdom, and kindness will be sorely missed. We bring you a somber story that has left the world of entertainment in shock. On June 23, 2024, tragedy struck the shores of Hawaii. Tamayo Perry, a man of many talents, actor, surfer, and lifeguard met his untimely end in an apparent shark attack. Perry, known for his roles in Pirates of the Caribbean, On Stranger Tides, and Blue Crush, was just 49 years old. Perry's life was a daring dance with the waves. Born and raised on the island of Oahu, he surfed the treacherous pipeline the world's deadliest wave like a true master. His infectious personality endeared him to fans worldwide, and his audacious surfing skills made him a legend. But Perry wasn't just a Hollywood star. He served as a lifeguard for the city and county of Honolulu, exemplifying bravery and commitment. His tireless efforts to ensure the safety of residents and visitors will never be forgotten. Mayor Rick Blangiardi expressed our collective grief, saying, His heroic actions will live on in our hearts. Perry's last wave crashed near Goat Island, where he suffered multiple shark bites. Despite the rescuer's swift efforts to bring him ashore, it was too late. The North Shore had lost one of its own. 
a man who rode the waves with unparalleled passion and courage. As the sun sets on this tragic day, we remember Tamayo Perry, a Hollywood star who found his final resting place in the very waters he loved. His legacy will continue to inspire surfers and lifeguards alike. We bring you a heartbreaking story that has left the music world in mourning. American rapper and singer Shifty Shellshock, whose real name was Seth Binzer, has tragically passed away at the age of 49. His untimely death has left fans and fellow artists in shock. Shifty Shellshock rose to fame in the late 90s as the charismatic frontman of the rap rock band Crazy Town. Their hit song, Butterfly, topped the Billboard Hot 100 chart for two weeks, introducing the band to a global audience. The track, which sampled the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Pretty Little Diddy, showcased Shifty's signature laid-back rapping style. However, behind the scenes, Shifty battled addiction. The rapid success of Butterfly took a heavy toll, and he struggled to find the means to cope. Despite the efforts of friends, family, and bandmates, he couldn't escape the grip of substance abuse. Crazy Town's journey was a tumultuous one. Their debut album, The Gift of Game, received mixed reviews, but Butterfly became an iconic anthem of the era. Unfortunately, the band couldn't replicate that success, leading to a hiatus after their second album, Dark Horse. They reunited in 2007, releasing their third album, The Brimstone Sluggers, in 2015. Today, we remember Shifty Shellshock not only as an artist but as a person who bravely fought his demons. His legacy lives on through his music, and we hope he has found peace beyond this troubled world. We pay tribute to an extraordinary American hero, Rome Davis, a trailblazer, a fighter, and a symbol of resilience, has left us at the age of 104. Her legacy will forever echo through the annals of history. Rome Davis was no ordinary woman. In 1942, she joined the 6,888th Central Postal Directory Battalion, a groundbreaking all-female, all-black unit in the United States Army. Their mission, to sort through mountains of backlog mail for soldiers during World War II. Rome was one of the 855 black women who defied stereotypes and shattered barriers. Their service was crucial, and Rome's dedication was unwavering. In 2022, Rome received the Congressional Gold Medal, the highest civilian honor bestowed by the U.S. Congress. It was a moment of triumph, recognizing her sacrifice, resilience, and unwavering commitment. Rome's story reminds us that race doesn't define abilities. Courage does. But Rome's impact extended far beyond the battlefield. She pursued a career as a fashion designer and model, proving that dreams know no boundaries. Later in life, she earned her second-degree black belt in Taekwondo, a testament to her indomitable spirit. Rome Davis was also a dedicated member of the Dexter Avenue King Memorial Baptist Church, where she served as a deacon. She worked at Winn-Dixie, stocking shelves and chatting with customers. Even at 104, her advice, when you want to do something, do it. And she did, inspiring us all. Tonight, as we bid farewell to Rome Davis, let us remember her as a beacon of hope, resilience, and unwavering commitment. We remember a remarkable talent who graced both Italian and international screens. Maria Rosaria Omaggio, the acclaimed actress, has left us after a prolonged illness. Born in Naples, she carved out a legacy that transcends borders. Omaggio appeared in over 40 film and television productions, leaving an indelible mark. Her versatility shone in Woody Allen's To Roam with Love, where she captivated audiences with her performance. At the Venice Film Festival, she received accolades for her portrayal of Italian journalist Oriana Falassi in Andrzej Wada's Wallace, Man of Hope. Omaggio's dedication to her craft was evident, and her impact extended beyond the silver screen. Beyond acting, Omaggio served as a passionate ambassador for UNICEF. Her commitment to children's rights resonated globally. Her legacy isn't confined to theaters. It's etched in hearts. Tonight, we honor Maria Rosaria Omaggio, a force in Italian theater and cinema. Her light may have dimmed, but her impact shines on. We bring you a somber tribute to a remarkable talent who graced both the stage and the political arena. Helinka Stan Ionescu, born on September 14, 1936, in Brad, Hundora, Romania, left an indelible mark on the world of theater and politics. Her debut in theater dates back to 1955, where she captivated audiences with her powerful performances. 
But Alinka was more than an actress. She served as a member of the Chamber of Deputies from 2000 to 2004, representing Romania's Italian minority. Her commitment to public service was unwavering, and her advocacy for minority rights echoed through the hallowed halls of Parliament. And let's not forget her delightful voice work as the queen in the animated film The Great Mouse Detective. But today, we mourn the passing of this extraordinary woman. Her legacy lives on, etched in the hearts of those who witnessed her brilliance. We remember a legendary figure in the world of music. Carlos Fausto Bordalo Gom Dias, known simply as Fausto, has left us. He was a Portuguese composer and singer, and his impact on the music scene was profound. Fausto's journey began on November 26, 1948, aboard the ship Petria during a voyage between Portugal and Angola. His unique blend of Portuguese and African musical traditions would later shape his artistry. Fausto's poetic lyrics and soulful melodies resonated with generations, both before and after the 25th of April Revolution. His songs, like O Barco Vai de Seda, Como Um Sonho Acordado, and Adguera e Adguera, became anthems of a nation seeking change. Fausto was more than a singer. He was a storyteller, weaving magic through his compositions. His 12 albums, spanning from 1970 to 2011, captured the essence of Portugal's history and spirit. In 1982, Fausto released his magnum opus, Por Est Rio Achima, inspired by Ferno Mendes Pinto's epic work, Peregrinação. It was a musical journey that enchanted listeners, leaving an indelible mark on our cultural landscape. Fausto's influence extended beyond the studio. He co-founded the group of cultural action Vozes na Luta, GAC, alongside Jose Murillo Branco, Afonso Diaz, and Tino Flores. Together, they championed protest songs and bridged diverse musical languages, blending tradition with pop rock sensibilities. Tonight, as we bid farewell to this maestro of composition, let us remember his legacy. Fausto's music will continue to echo through time, inspiring new generations. His final album, M. Busca das Montanhas Azuis, released in 2011, stands as a testament to his enduring artistry. We bring you a somber update from the world of entertainment. A talented actor has left us, leaving behind a legacy that will forever resonate in our hearts. On June 28, 2024, the Spanish actor Tina Blasco passed away at the age of 82. Born in Gastes, he received the prestigious Celadon de Oro Award in 2020. Blasco's journey in the world of cinema was nothing short of remarkable. His performances graced the screens in films by acclaimed directors such as Pelo Varela, Enrique Urbizu, Julio Maidem, and Monzo Armendariz. As we bid farewell to Xima Blasco, we honor his contributions to the art of storytelling. His talent, dedication, and passion will continue to inspire generations to come. We remember a true legend of the Great Lakes region. Pat Daly, the celebrated Seer songwriter, passed away peacefully at the age of 83. His music touched the hearts of many, and his legacy will forever resonate across the shores of Lake Erie. Pat Daly was more than just a musician. He was a storyteller. His entertaining mix of romantic ballads, body tunes, and party songs made him a fixture at the party island of Putin Bay since 1978. Whether it was the Mammoth Beer Barrel or the more intimate Boathouse Bar, Pat's performances were unforgettable. But it wasn't just about the music. During his first winter at Sloppy Joe's Bar in Key West, Pat became good friends with the legendary poet and playwright, Shel Silverstein. Shel was a major inspiration and mentor to Pat until his passing in 1999. Their bond transcended the stage, and their creative spirits danced together in the warm Florida breeze. Pat's recordings include a two-disc collection of his G or PG-rated tunes titled Squeaky Clean. He once said, As I got older, I realized it was also keeping me away from a lot of stuff. My friend Shell encouraged me to do more clean stuff. And so, he did capturing hearts with lyrics that resonated across generations. Tonight, as we say goodbye to Pat Daly, let us remember the joy he brought to our lives. His songs echoed through the valleys, danced on the waves, and found a home in our hearts. We remember a true legend of comedy and television. Martin Mull, the versatile actor known for his roles in iconic sitcoms like Roseanne and Sabrina the Teenage Witch, has passed away at the age of 80. Martin Mull was more than just a funny face on our screens. He was a master of wit, a brilliant performer 
who could effortlessly switch between comedy and drama. His career spanned decades, leaving an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. You might remember him as Leon Karp, Roseanne's witty gay boss on Roseanne, or perhaps you laughed along with his portrayal of Principal Willard Kraft on Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Martin Mull brought charm, charisma, and a dash of irreverence to every role he played. His daughter, Maggie Mull, shared the heartbreaking news on Instagram. My father passed away at home on June 27 after a valiant fight against a long illness. He was known for excelling at every creative discipline imaginable, and also for doing Red Roof Inn commercials. He would find that joke funny. He was never not funny. Martin Mull wasn't just an actor. He was a painter, a musician, and a raconteur. From Arrested Development to Two and a Half Men, he left an indelible mark on our screens. And let's not forget his Emmy-nominated turn on Veep. Martin was an accomplished painter. His art captured humor, whimsy, and the human experience. He made us laugh, he made us think, and he made us appreciate the beauty of life. So tonight, as we bid farewell to Martin Mull, let's remember the laughter he brought into our lives. His legacy lives on through his work, his wit, and the countless dogs who surely miss his presence. We remember a remarkable woman who left an indelible mark on the world of motorsports. Lizzie Musi, the star of Street Outlaws, No Prep Kings, has passed away at the age of 33. Lizzie Musi was more than just a race car driver. She was a trailblazer. Born into a family steeped in racing tradition, she followed in her father Pat Musi's footsteps. Lizzie made her pro nitrous debut in 2014 becoming the first woman to break 200 miles per hour in 8-mile door slammer racing. Her win at the U.S. Drags at Virginia Motorsports Park solidified her as the first woman to win the Professional Drag Racers Association event. But Lizzie didn't stop there. On the Discovery Channel's Street Outlaws, No Prep Kings, she raced her beloved car, Bonnie, and later, Bonnie 2.0, a Robert Hayes race cars, built 1969 Chevy Camaro. Lizzie shattered barriers, becoming the first female driver to win a No Prep Kings event and the first driver overall to win three in a row. Yet life threw her the toughest curveball. In April 2023, Lizzie was diagnosed with stage 4 triple negative breast cancer. Undeterred, she chronicled her fight on social media, sharing her resilience and determination. Lizzie's spirit remained unbroken, even as the disease spread to her lymph nodes and liver. Today, we honor Lizzie Musi's legacy. Our hearts go out to her family, friends, and the entire racing community. Lizzie, you race not only on the track, but also in life. Your courage, tenacity, and passion will forever inspire us. We bring you a special tribute to a beloved entertainer who left an indelible mark on the world of comedy and television. Hiram Kasten, a Bronx native and lifelong Yankees fan, was more than just a comedian. He was a storyteller a master of wit, and a friend to all who knew him. His journey began on the vibrant stages of New York City, where he honed his craft at iconic comedy clubs like The Comic Strip and Comedy Cellar. His dedication and passion for laughter led him to marathon weekends, performing gigs across the city and beyond. In the early 90s, Kasten made his mark on the small screen. You might remember him as Michael Elaine Bean's quirky co-worker on the legendary sitcom Seinfeld. His deadpan delivery and impeccable timing left audiences in stitches. Kasten's chemistry with Julia Louis-Dreyfus was electric, and those three episodes remain etched in our hearts. But Hiram's talents extended far beyond the sitcom realm. He graced other hit shows like Curb Your Enthusiasm, Seventh Heaven, and Mad About You. His versatility knew no bounds, and his performances were always a delightful surprise. In 2012, Hiram and his wife, Diana Kastenbaum, moved to Batavia, New York, to be close to family. Diana, a congressional candidate, shared his love for community and service. Together, they built a life filled with laughter, love, and resilience. As we bid farewell to this comedic legend, we celebrate Hiram Kasten's legacy. His laughter echoes through the halls of comedy clubs, resonates in our favorite TV moments, and lives on in the hearts of those who knew him. We remember a vibrant soul who touched the hearts of many. Keith Jabber, a beloved reality star, has left us far too soon. Keith Jabber, known for her captivating presence on Love and Marriage, Huntsville, was more than just a TV personality. She was a mother, a sister, and a friend, a beacon of life, love, and laughter. Her sudden departure has left a void in our hearts.
Sheik's journey began on the small screen, where she navigated the complexities of relationships and business ventures. Her infectious smile and unwavering spirit resonated with viewers across the nation. But today, we gather not to mourn, but to celebrate her life. Keek Jabber's passing was unexpected, yet her legacy will endure. She was surrounded by love, peacefully departing from this world, while at home. Her husband, her life partner, tried desperately to revive her, the mother of their children. But fate had other plans. Keek's departure was silent, caused by an invisible threat, carbon monoxide poisoning. And so we honor Keek Jabber, a star who shone brightly, even in the darkest moments. Let us remember her laughter, her resilience, and her love for life. As we say our goodbyes, let her memory inspire us to cherish every breath. A legendary artist has left us, leaving behind a legacy that will resonate for generations. Born in Tbilisi, Georgia, Liana Isakadz was a prodigious talent. At the tender age of 10, she played her first solo violin concert in 1956. Her brilliance caught the attention of none other than the famed Soviet violinist David Oistrakh, who became her mentor. Isakadz's career soared, earning her accolades and international recognition. Isakadz's name became synonymous with excellence. She won the 1965 Grand Prix at the Marguerite Long and Jacques the Bond International Competition in Paris. Her interpretation of Georgian composer's works was nothing short of magical. And in 1970, she clinched first place at the John Sibelius International Violin Competition in Helsinki. But Liana Isakadz wasn't just a virtuoso. She was a musical ambassador. Her unique handwriting and performance and conducting brought Georgian traditions to the world stage. She was honored as the People's Artist of the Soviet Union and received the Order of Honor of Georgia. And let's not forget her role as the founder of the Night Serenades International Festival, which ran for an incredible 42 years. Today, we mourn the loss of a legend. Liana Isakadze's violin sang with passion, bridging cultures and touching hearts. As we bid farewell, remember her name, her artistry, and the indelible mark she left on classical music. We bring you a somber note from the world of music. George Tickner, a name synonymous with rock and roll, has left us. Let's remember the man behind the chords, the co-founder of Journey, who shaped the soundtracks of our lives. George Tickner was more than just a guitarist. He was an architect of melodies. Born in San Francisco, he co-founded Journey alongside Neil Sean, Greg Rowley, Ross Valerie, and Prairie Prince in the early 1970s. Their eponymous debut album, Journey, introduced Tickner's distinctive rhythm guitar work to the world. Tickner's massive hands danced across the fretboard, creating chord progressions that defied convention. His voicings were unlike anything we heard before. Songs like Wheel in the Sky and Feeling That Way bore this signature. Journey went on to become one of the most iconic rock bands of the 1980s, selling over 100 million records globally. And who can forget Don't Stop Believin'? Tickner's legacy lives on in every note of that anthem. After leaving Journey to pursue higher education at Stanford University, Tickner remained close to music. He co-founded the Hive Recording Studio with Ross Valerie, continuing to shake the industry. And so, as we bid farewell to George Tickner, let us remember the chords he struck, the harmonies he crafted, and the memories he etched into our hearts. We remember a shining star who left us too soon. Broadway alumna Jade Stice, known for her remarkable talent and passion, tragically lost her life in a hiking accident on the West Coast. Our hearts go out to her family, friends, and the entire performing arts community. Jade Stice, a name synonymous with grace and brilliance. Born and raised in Hawaii, she graced the stages of Broadway, leaving audiences spellbound. Her performances were more than just entertainment, they were transformative experiences. From Le Miserables to The Phantom of the Opera, Jade's voice resonated with raw emotion, touching souls across the world. But Jade was more than a star on stage. She returned home, sharing her knowledge and experiences with aspiring artists. As a mentor, she nurtured young talents, encouraging them to dream big. Jay believed that art had the power to heal, inspire, and change lives. Her legacy lives on through the countless lives she touched. Jade Stice was a force of nature. Her laughter echoed through rehearsal halls, her determination fueled late night practices, and her kindness uplifted everyone around her. Whether it was a high note in a show tune or a heartfelt conversation backstage, Jade's impact was immeasurable. 
And now, as we bid farewell to this extraordinary soul, we remember Jade Stice not only for her talent, but for her spirit. She taught us that life is fleeting, and every moment matters. So, dear viewers, cherish your passions, embrace your loved ones, and live fully. Today, we bring you the somber news of the passing of a prominent figure in the financial world. Josie Robles Jr., the former CEO of USAA, has died at the age of 72. Robles was a visionary leader who transformed USAA into a powerhouse in the insurance and financial services industry. His legacy will forever be etched in the annals of corporate history. Robles took the helm of USAA in 2007 during a tumultuous time for the financial sector. His steady hand and strategic vision guided the company through the global financial crisis, ensuring stability for its members and employees. Under Robles' leadership, USAA expanded its offerings, embracing digital innovation while maintaining its commitment to personalized service. Whether it was ensuring military families or providing investment solutions, Robles understood the importance of trust and integrity. Josie Robles Jr. was more than a CEO. He was a mentor, a friend. His dedication to our military community was unwavering. He believed that financial security was a fundamental right for those who serve our nation. Robles' impact extended beyond the boardroom. He championed initiatives to support veterans, advocating for better health care, education, and employment opportunities. His legacy isn't just about profits. It's about people. Today, as we mourn his loss, we remember Joe Sue Robles Jr. as a man of integrity, compassion, and resilience. His legacy lives on in the lives he touched and the principles he upheld. And so, as we bid farewell to this remarkable leader, we bring you a somber update from the world of entertainment. Chinese-American singer, songwriter, and actress, Coco Lee, has tragically left us. She was a remarkable talent, known for her powerful voice and groundbreaking achievements. Let's delve into her extraordinary journey. Born Farin Lee on January 17, 1975, in Hong Kong, Coco Lee's life was marked by both triumphs and challenges. Raised in Hong Kong and United States, she embarked on her musical career in the vibrant city of Hong Kong. Her talent transcended borders, eventually reaching Taiwan and beyond. Coco Lee was no ordinary artist. She shattered barriers, becoming the first Chinese singer to break into the American market. Her English language R&B album, Just No Other Way, made waves in 1999. The single Do You Want My Love climbed the charts, capturing international attention. Coco's Americanized dance routines were unforgettable. But Coco Lee's impact extended beyond music. She lent her voice to Fa Mulan in the Mandarin version of Disney's animated film Mulan. Her rendition of Reflection touched hearts worldwide. And at the 73rd Academy Awards, she became the first Chinese performer to grace that prestigious stage. Coco Lee was a trailblazer. She sang at NBA games, held concerts at the Walt Disney Concert Hall in Los Angeles, and won the Chinese reality show I Am A Singer. Chanel recognized her influence appointing her as their first Chinese brand ambassador. Today, we mourn the loss of a true diva. Coco Lee's legacy will forever resonate in the halls of music history. As we say our goodbyes, remember her words. Music knows no boundaries. We remember a talented actress whose light was extinguished far too soon. Spencer Grammer, known for her roles in Rick and Morty and Greek, has left us, leaving a void in the entertainment world. Spencer Grammer was more than just an actress. She was a voice that resonated with millions. Her portrayal of Summer Smith in Rick and Morty brought humor and depth to an animated character. And as Casey Cartwright in Greek, she captured the essence of college life, making us laugh, cry, and reflect. But today, we gather not to celebrate her accomplishments, but to mourn her passing. Spencer Grammer's stepfather, Dr. Bill Skinner, was a pillar of support in her life. Despite the twists and turns, he remained a constant presence, a father figure who believed in her unconditionally. Spencer shared a heartfelt tribute on Instagram, writing, He always gave me a hug, always listened, always believed in me, and always supported me. But now, tragically, Dr. Bill has left us. Our hearts ache, and we wish we had more time with him. It's a reminder to cherish those we love, to capture moments in photographs, and to make time count. Life is fleeting and we lost Dr. Bill too soon. His kindness and generosity touched many lives, including Spencer's. So, as we bid farewell to Spencer Grammer and honor her stepfather's memory, 
Let's remember the impact they've had. We bring you heartbreaking news from the world of entertainment. Lisa Vanderpump, the renowned TV personality, actress, and businesswoman, has passed away. She was a beloved figure in Hollywood, known for her elegance, wit, and unapologetic style. Vanderpump's impact extended far beyond the screen. She was a philanthropist, an advocate for animal rights, and a trailblazer in the reality television industry. From her iconic role on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills to her successful spin-off show Vanderpump Rules, Lisa enchanted audiences with her charisma and sharp humor. Her restaurants, including H.U.R. and Pump, became cultural landmarks, drawing fans and foodies alike. Lisa was more than a TV star, she was a force of nature. Her elegance was matched only by her compassion. Whether she was advocating for LGBT plus rights or rescuing dogs, Lisa used her platform to make a difference. Tonight, fans around the world gather to honor Lisa's memory. The hashtag hashtag remembering Lisa trends on social media as tributes pour in from fellow celebrities, fans, and colleagues. Her legacy will forever resonate in the hearts of those who admired her. And so, as we bid farewell to Lisa Vanderpump, we remember her laughter, her elegance, and her unwavering spirit. We pay tribute to a true icon of the silver screen, Donald Sutherland, the gravelly voiced Canadian actor who graced both TV and movie screens, has passed away at the age of 88. Join us as we celebrate his remarkable career and legacy. Sutherland's journey began with classics like The Dirty Dozen and his unforgettable role as Hawkeye Pierce in Maz Asterisk 8. His talent knew no bounds, and he continued to captivate audiences throughout the decades. From the haunting Don't Look Now to the hilarious pot smoking professor in Animal House. Sutherland's versatility was unmatched. His scream in Invasion of the Body Snatchers even became an internet sensation. Despite never winning an Oscar, Sutherland's accolades were plenty. Golden Globes, Primetime Emmys, and an Honorary Academy Award, all testament to his brilliance. And in 2023, Canada Post honored him with a stamp. Beyond the silver screen, Sutherland was a left-wing anti-war activist and a devoted father to actors Kiefer, Rossif and Angus Sutherland. His advice to young actors? Work hard, be truthful, and observe. Tonight, we bid farewell to a legend. Donald Sutherland, your legacy lives on. We bring you heartbreaking news from the world of music. John Bon Jovi, the iconic American singer-songwriter and guitarist, has left us today. His legacy, etched in rock and roll history, spans decades. Born John Francis Bon Jovi Jr., John Bon Jovi founded the legendary band Bon Jovi back in 1983. Their anthems echoed through stadiums, their melodies etched into our hearts. From living on a prayer to wanted dead or alive, John's raspy voice and magnetic stage presence captivated millions. His lyrics spoke of love, resilience, and the human spirit. His former bandmates are heartbroken tonight. Alec John Such, the founding bass player, shared this. We found our way to each other through John. He was a childhood friend of Tico Torres and introduced Richie Sambora to our music. John Bon Jovi was always wild and full of life. His special memories bring smiles to our faces and tears to our eyes. And so, as we bid farewell to John Bon Jovi, we remember the anthems, the passion, and the indelible mark he left on the world. We pay tribute to a remarkable talent who graced both the small and big screens, Joan Benedict Steiger. Joan Benedict Steiger, born in Brooklyn, made her mark in the entertainment industry during the 1950s. She starred in the original iterations of hits like Candid Camera and The Steve Allen Show. Her portrayal of Edith Fairchild on General Hospital remains etched in our memories. Beyond television, Joan shone on stage, starring in one-woman shows and off-Broadway productions. From Promises, Promises, to the beauty queen of Lenane, her talent knew no bounds. TV viewers also remember her appearances on Fantasy Island and The Incredible Hulk. Joan's personal life was as captivating as her career. She was married to actor John Myers for 30 years. Later, she shared a brief but intense bond with actor Rod Steiger. Sadly, both Myers and Steiger have left us. In closing, let us celebrate Joan Benedict Steiger's legacy. A trailblazer, a gifted actress, and a woman who touched our hearts. We bring you a somber story from the world of sports. Joe Egan, the Irish professional boxer, has passed away at the age of 77. 
Let's delve into the life and legacy of this remarkable fighter. Joseph Egan was born into an Irish Catholic family on October 16, 1946, in Paley, near Glasgow. His journey from the gritty streets to the boxing ring captured hearts worldwide. Egan's fists were as fierce as his determination, and he left an indelible mark on the sport. Egan's most significant achievement came as Jerry Rafferty's partner in the band Steelers Wheel. Their 1973 hit, Stuck in the Middle with You, resonated across the globe. Little did they know that two decades later, Quentin Tarantino would immortalize it in his feature film debut, Reservoir Dogs. But Joe Egan wasn't just a musician. He was also a former professional boxer. He trained with the legendary Iron Mike Tyson, a testament to his grit and resilience. Sadly, fate dealt him a cruel hand when he was shot twice outside his own pub. Yet Egan's spirit remained unbroken. Tonight, we bid farewell to a true warrior, a man who fought both in the ring and in life. Joe Egan, born on October 18, 1946, left us on July 6, 2024. His legacy lives on through his music, his boxing, and the memories etched in our hearts. We bring you a summer update from the world of entertainment. A beloved actress has left us, leaving behind a legacy that will forever resonate with audiences. Let's dive into the life and career of Marta Ora. Marta Ora, born on September 4, 1942, in Mexico City, was a remarkable talent. Despite her parents' initial disapproval, she pursued her passion for acting, leaving home alongside her sister, Maria Elena Ora, and brother, Alejandro Ora. Little did they know that Marta would go on to become a celebrated figure in Mexican cinema and television. In 1959, Marta made her stage debut, but it was in 1965 that she truly captured the spotlight. Her talent and dedication led her to meet actor Adam Guevara, with whom she had two children. After their divorce, fate intervened, and she found love again with Ruben Rojo, a Mexican actor of Spanish origin. Together, they had a son, Ruben Rojo Ora. Marta Ora's filmography is a testament to her versatility. From Courage, 2022, to Cuatro Lunas, 2017, she breathed life into diverse characters. Whether portraying a mother, a mysterious spirit, or a strong-willed woman, Marta's performances resonated with audiences across generations. Sadly, on July 8, 2022, Marta Ora passed away in Mexico City at the age of 791. Her legacy lives on through her three children and four grandchildren. As we bid farewell to this extraordinary actress, we bring you a somber update from the world of music. Legendary songwriter Cynthia Weil has left us, leaving behind a legacy that will resonate for generations. Cynthia Weil, the prolific songwriter behind timeless hits like You've Lost That Lovin' Feeling, has passed away at the age of 82. Her daughter, Dr. Jen Mann, confirmed the news sharing that Weil peacefully departed on Thursday night at her home in Beverly Hills. Throughout her remarkable career, Weil penned chart toppers that became anthems for love, heartache, and resilience. Songs like On Broadway, Make Your Own Kind of Music, and Walking in the Rain captured the essence of their time and continue to touch hearts today. Born and raised in New York, Weil initially trained as an actress and dancer, but destiny had other plans. She discovered her true passion, Songwriting. Alongside her husband, Barry Mann, she co-wrote hits that defined an era. Their partnership flourished at the iconic Brill Building in Manhattan, where melodies flowed like poetry. Phil Spector, the enigmatic producer, also played a role in their journey. Decades before his tragic downfall, Spector collaborated with Weil and Mann, creating magic in the recording studio. Cynthia Weil's melodies will echo through time, reminding us that music transcends boundaries as we bid farewell to this trailblazer, let's celebrate her artistry and honor her memory. We bring you a somber tribute to a remarkable talent lost too soon. French composer, pianist, singer, and music producer, Nino Vela, passed away on July 1, 2024, at the age of 31. Born in Cholet, France, on November 18, 1992, Vela's musical journey was nothing short of extraordinary. Mito Vela's passion for music ignited at a tender age. He began music school at six, immersing himself in classical music and jazz. By the age of 11, he was experimenting with electronic music in a small studio at his parents' home. His versatility knew no bounds. Pianist, singer, guitarist, and drummer, 
he wore many hats. In 2012, Vela's talent earned him the Prix de Piano et le Prix d'Orchestration, au Conservatoire de Cholette. He composed original music for plays and co-founded the band Babel. Their performances resonated across France, Canada, and China. Vela's collaboration with artists like Mays, Yusult, and Mylene Farmer showcased his boundless creativity. In 2020, Vela lent his musical genius to the Netflix original film, How I Became a Superhero. The following year, he toured with singer Yusul, leaving audiences spellbound. His record label birthed the band Rue Queen, which triumphed on the artist's show, hosted by Nagy. Their album, Masculine, echoed through France, Switzerland, China, and Belgium. As we bid farewell to this musical luminary, we invite you to honor his legacy. Remember Nino Vela, a soul who painted melodies across our lives. We remember a remarkable artist whose music touched hearts around the world. I'm talking about the celebrated Georgian violinist, Liana Isaacads. Liana Isaacads was born on August 2, 1946, in Tbilisi, Georgia. She began her musical journey at the Tbilisi Central Music School, under the guidance of Professor Leo Shukashvili. Later, she honed her skills at the Moscow Conservatory, graduating in 1970. Isakadze's illustrious career spanned decades. As a prodigy of the legendary David Oistrak, she won prizes at prestigious international violin competitions, including the Margaret Lohm and Jacques Thabaud, Tchaikovsky, and Sibelius competitions. Her performances of works by Georgian composers resonated deeply with audiences worldwide. Isakadze's impact extended beyond the stage. She served as the long-term concertmaster of the Chamber Orchestra of Georgia and later became its artistic director and principal conductor. Her leadership elevated the orchestra's artistry, and in 1998, she brought it back to its native land. A true cultural ambassador, Isaac Hads founded international festivals, including the Enchanting Night Serenades in Georgia and Germany, where music transcended borders. She also established the Liana Isaac Hads Festival in Vienna and Liechtenstein, celebrating the universal language of music. Isaac Hads's accolades were numerous. She held the honorary titles of People's Artist of Georgia and People's Artist of the USSR, becoming the youngest musician ever to receive these honors. Her legacy lives on in the 2002 Encyclopedia, 2000 Outstanding Musicians. Today, we mourn the loss of Liana Isakadz, who passed away in Polisi on July 5, 2024, at the age of 77. Her music will forever echo in our hearts. We remember a remarkable woman whose legacy will forever be etched in Turkish history. Nilfer Gersoy, a distinguished philologist, politician and memoirist, passed away on July 1, 2024, at the age of 103. Nilfer Gersoy was more than just a name. She embodied resilience, intellect and unwavering commitment to public service. Born Nilfer Bayar in Bursa, Turkey, in 1921, she hailed from a prominent family. Her father, Selo Bayar served as Turkey's third president, and her upbringing was steeped in intellectual pursuits. In her academic journey, Nilfer attended Merev Kaleji, later TD Ankara College, and Istanbul University, where she studied philosophy. Later, she delved into classical philology at Ankara University, earning her Doctor of Philology degree in 1954. Her research on Europide's political views remains influential to this day. Nilfer Gersoy's political career was equally remarkable. She joined the Justice Party, Adalet Partisi, in 1961, serving as a deputy from Bursa in the 13th Parliament. Her eloquence and dedication made her a respected voice in the Grand National Assembly of Turkey. She later switched to the Democratic Party, Democratic Party, and continued her service as a deputy from Istanbul. Her commitment to democracy and justice never wavered, even during challenging times. The 1960 coup d'etat led to her dismissal from Ankara University, where she was an assistant professor. Yet she persisted, filing a lawsuit against the university and winning, though she chose not to return to academia. Today, we honor Nilfer Grusoy's legacy, a trailblazer who defied norms, championed education, and fearlessly advocated for her beliefs. As we bid farewell, let us remember her words. Knowledge is our greatest weapon against ignorance. We remember a remarkable leader who left an indelible mark on the financial world. Josu Joe Robles Jr., former CEO of USA, passed away on July 4th at the age of 78. Joe Robles was more than just a CEO. He was a soldier at his core. His service included multiple deployments, 
and several distinguished honors. As a two-star general, he led with integrity and commitment, not only to his teammates, but also to the millions of USA members and our great country. Robles joined USAA in 1994 as the Chief Financial Officer and Controller. Over the years, he served as Corporate Treasurer and Chief Administrative Officer, before assuming the role of CEO and President in 2007. Under his leadership, USA membership grew by 53%, revenue surged by 45%, and net worth soared by 68%. But Joe Robles was more than just numbers. He embodied resilience and determination. Even after revealing his battle with Parkinson's disease, he continued to steer USAA through challenging times. His legacy will forever be etched in the financial landscape. Today, we honor Joe Robles, a man who exemplified service, leadership, and unwavering dedication. As we say goodbye, let us remember his contributions and the impact he had on countless lives. Farah El Qadi a vibrant and influential figure in the world of social media, has tragically left us. She was just 36 years old. Farah's journey began in Tunisia, where she captured the hearts of over 1.1 million followers on Instagram. Her posts showcased not only her impeccable style, but also her warmth and kindness. But on June 17, during a holiday in Malta, tragedy struck. Farah was aboard a yacht when she suffered a suspected heart attack. She was rushed to Mater Dei Hospital, where, despite the best efforts of medical professionals, she was pronounced dead. The news sent shockwaves through the influencer community and beyond. Farah's Instagram account was a canvas of beauty, elegance, and joie de vivre. Her most recent post, shared from Mykonos, featured her in a striking red and white dress. The caption read, Les Violets Sant Blues, Les Roses Sant Rudges. A poetic nod to love and life. As we remember Farah, we're reminded that life is fragile and our time here is fleeting. Her friend, Suleiman Nia, described her as a truly wonderful person. Farah's legacy lives on in the hearts of those who admired her authenticity and grace. And so, dear viewers, we bid farewell to Farah El Qadi. May her memory be eternal. William Russell, one of the original cast members of Doctor Who has passed away at the age of 99. His legacy spans decades and his impact on the show and its fans is immeasurable. Russell rose to fame playing the role of Ian Chesterton, the school teacher who stumbled upon the Tar Diaz in the very first episode of Doctor Who. His chemistry with the first Doctor, portrayed by William Hartnell, set the tone for the show's early years. Russell's character was curious, brave, and always ready for adventure. He was the Doctor's first companion, and their dynamic remains legendary. In the groundbreaking episode, An Unearthly Child, Russell's character mistakenly called the Doctor Dr. Foreman. The Doctor's enigmatic reply, Doctor Who, it was a moment that would echo throughout the show's history, but Russell's talents extended beyond the Tar DIS. He played Sir Lancelot in the 1956 series Adventures of Sir Lancelot, captivating audiences with his chivalry and valor. Later, he graced the cobbled streets of Coronation Street as Ted Sullivan, Rita Fairclaw's smooth-talking husband. Russell appeared in films like The Man Who Never Was, The Great Escape, and even Superman. His versatility knew no bounds. Today, we say goodbye to a fine, nimble, witty actor who absolutely sold the truth of those early years. Russell's legacy lives on in the hearts of fans worldwide. His twinkly eyes and charming smile will forever light up our memories. John Waddington, the founding guitarist of the influential UK post-punk band, The Pop Group, passed away on June 20, 2024, at the age of 63. His legacy reverberates through the annals of music history, and tonight, we pay tribute to his unforgettable contributions. John Waddington was more than a guitarist. He was an artist who fearlessly blended genres, pushing boundaries and challenging conventions. Born on January 1, 1960 in Bristol, England, Waddington embarked on a musical journey that would leave an indelible mark on the post-punk landscape. As a founding member of the pop group, Waddington lent his unmistakable sound to their groundbreaking albums. Why and for how much longer do we tolerate mass murder? Captured the zeitgeist of the late 70s and early 80s. Their music was a fusion of punk energy, dub reggae, and avant-garde experimentation. John was a force of nature. His guitar work was like lightning striking through the speakers. We were rebels, and John's riffs were our battle cries. 
Beyond the pop group, Waddington collaborated with artists like Maximum Joy, Judy Nylon, and Lily Allen. His energy and friendship resonated with everyone he worked with, leaving an indelible mark on their music. Fans remember him as a charismatic performer, a man who poured his heart into every chord. His guitar spoke louder than words, bridging gaps and inspiring generations. Tonight, as we say goodbye to John Waddington, let us honor his legacy. His music lives on, echoing through the halls of rebellion and creativity. We pay tribute to a true Canadian icon. Ray Street Germain, the beloved Winnipeg musician and longtime host of Big Sky Country, has left us. He passed away on June 25, 2024, at the age of 83. His legacy is etched in the hearts of music lovers across the nation. Ray Street Germain first graced Canadian homes as the host of the 1969 variety show, Time for Living. Although the program lasted only one season, it propelled Street Germain's music career and endeared him to audiences. His debut album, released in 1968, set the stage for a remarkable journey. Over the years, Street Germain gifted us with 10 LPs including the 1978 self-titled album that spawned hits like Please Don't Hurt Me and Thank You For Loving Me, but it was Big Sky Country that truly cemented his place in our hearts. For over a dozen years, his warm voice and genuine passion graced screens across Canada. Ray Street Germain wasn't just a musician and TV host, he was a storyteller. His songs captured the spirit of the prairies, the vast skies, rolling fields, and the heartbeat of the Métis culture. He sang of love, loss, and resilience, touching souls with every note. In 2010, Ray was inducted into the Canadian Country Music Hall of Fame. His name graced the Aboriginal Wall of Honor in the Winnipeg Friendship Center, and he received the prestigious Order of Manitoba. And just this month, a Winnipeg street was renamed in his honor. His autobiography, I wanted to be Elvis, so what was I doing in Moose Jaw? Revealed the man behind the music, the dreams, struggles, and triumphs. Ray Street Germain was more than an entertainer. He was a beacon of inspiration. Today, as we bid farewell, let us remember Ray's soulful voice, his infectious smile, and the way he made us feel connected. To the Street Germain family, our deepest sympathies. Ray, thank you for the music. Your legacy lives on. We remember a true pioneer in the world of television. Jamie Kellner, a name that resonates with anyone who's ever tuned in to Fox or the WB passed away on June 21, 2024, at the age of 77. His legacy is etched into the very fabric of broadcast history. Jamie Kellner was no ordinary executive. He defied convention, reshaping the landscape of television. As the only person to create not one, but two broadcast networks, he left an indelible mark. Fox and the WB owe their existence to his vision and determination. Under Kellner's watch, Fox brought us groundbreaking shows like The Simpsons and Married with Children. Meanwhile, the WB became home to cultural touchstones like Dawson's Creek, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and Gilmore Girls. But Jamie Kellner wasn't just about networks and ratings. He believed in nurturing talent. Greg Berlanti, J.J. Abrams, Kevin Williamson, and Joss Whedon, all owe their early careers to them. And let's not forget comedy legends like Jamie Foxx and the Wayans brothers. Kellner's Camelot-esque leadership at the WB fostered an environment where creativity thrived. He was more than an executive. He was a mentor, a friend, and a guiding light. Jamie Kellner retired at 57, having left an indelible mark on the industry. His legacy lives on through Fox and the CW, born from the merger of the WB and UPN. But beyond TV, Kellner pursued passion sailing, golf, and even winemaking. We remember a true wrestling icon. Sika Anoi, a WVD Hall of Famer, passed away on June 25, 2024, leaving behind a legacy that will forever resonate in the squared circle. Born in American Samoa, Sika Anoi began his wrestling journey after moving to the U.S. with his family. Alongside his brother Afa Anoi, he formed the legendary tag team known as the Wild Salmons. Their barefooted, raw fish-eating antics inside the ring became iconic, captivating fans worldwide. In 1980, the Wild Salmons clinched the WWE World Tag Team Championship, the first of their three title wins. They weren't just wrestlers. They were cultural ambassadors, representing their Pacific Islander heritage with pride. 
But Seika Anoe's impact extended beyond championships and gimmicks. He was a mentor, shaping the next generation of wrestlers at the Wild Simone Training Center in Florida. His legacy lives on through his sons, Leedy, Roman Reigns Anoe, and the late Matthew Rosie Anoe, both of whom followed in their father's footsteps. Roman Reigns, the current WWE superstar, tweeted, My father, Polavel Lee Sika Anoe, will forever be remembered as one half of the Wild Simone's tag team. His impact on our family is immeasurable. Today, we say goodbye to a legend. Sika Anoe's spirit will echo in the hearts of wrestling fans worldwide. As we honor his memory, let's remember his words. In the ring, we're warriors. Outside, we're family. We remember a remarkable talent who graced stages and screens across three continents. Cuban actress Isabel Moreno, known for her unforgettable performances, has left us at the age of 82. Let's take a closer look at her extraordinary life. Born in Havana on January 28, 1942, Isabel Moreno was the only daughter of Eugenio Moreno and Isabel Perez. Her artistic journey began in the theater, where she honed her craft and became a force to be reckoned with. She fearlessly ventured into film and television, leaving an indelible mark on each medium. In the 1960s, Moreno immersed herself in the cultural movement of Havana. She joined theater groups, including the Conjunto Dramaica of Nacional and Grupo Teatro Estudio. Her roles span from classics like A Streetcar Named Desire to contemporary works by Cuban playwrights. In the early 90s, she immigrated to Venezuela, gracing telenovelas on networks like Mart TV, RCTV, and Venevision. Her talent knew no borders, and in 2001, she arrived in the United States, where she continued to captivate audiences through television and theater. Moreno's filmography includes memorable roles, but it's her stage presence that truly resonated. Whether portraying Teresa Trebijo, La Sagiaguerra, or the enigmatic Bernarda Alba, she brought authenticity and depth to every character. Isabel Moreno's legacy extends beyond her performances. She was a teacher, sharing her expertise at the National Art School of Cuba and the Instituto Superior de Arte. Her impact on the theater community reverberates to this day. On June 9, 2024, Isabel Moreno passed away in Miami, leaving behind a rich tapestry of artistry. Her spirit lives on through the roles she inhabited, the stories she told, and the hearts she touched. We remember a remarkable talent who graced the world's stages with her ethereal voice. Margarita Voits, the Estonian coloratura soprano, passed away on June 20, 2024, leaving behind a legacy that will resonate for generations. Born Margarita Lombeck in Moscow on October 30, 1936, Voit's journey took her from the Soviet Union to Estonia. Her father, an Estonian artillery engineer, and her mother, of Russian and Polish origin, nurtured her love for music. She studied at the Tallinn Conservatory where her voice blossomed under the guidance of Linda Saul. Voits graced the stages of Vanumuen Theatre and Estonia Theatre. Her performances were nothing short of magical. As Fraskita in Bizet's Carmen, she captivated audiences. And as Violetta in Verdi's La Traviata, her voice soared, leaving hearts trembling. The Bolshoi Theatre in Moscow also witnessed her brilliance. Voits was honored as a meritorious artist of the Estonian SSR in 1969. And in 2011, she received the prestigious order of the White Star, HEAT class. Her legacy extends beyond accolades. It lives in the hearts of those who heard her sing. Born in Mannheim on February 24, 1951, Gabrielle Schnott embarked on a musical journey that would leave an indelible mark. Initially trained as a violinist, she later discovered her true calling as a singer. Her studies at the Peter Cornelius Conservatory in Mainz and the Frankfurt University of Music and Performing Arts laid the foundation for her extraordinary career. In 1976, Schnapp made her debut as a mezzo-soprano at the Staatsoper Stuttgart. But it was her Beirut Festival debut the following year in Patrice Chirau's groundbreaking production of Wagner's Ring Cycle that catapulted her into the international spotlight. Gabriela Schnott's voice soared across stages from La Scala to the Metropolitan Opera. She portrayed iconic roles like Brenhild, Elektra, and Tarandot. Her performances were not mere recitals, they were visceral experiences that left audiences breathless. Beyond her stage presence, Schnott was a dedicated educator. 
From 2005 to 2014, she served as a professor of voice at the Universidad der Kunst. Her influence extended beyond the footlights, shaping the next generation of artists. Her artistry earned her prestigious titles, Kammersängerin in Hamburg and Munich, and a recipient of the Bavarian Order of Merit. But it was her unwavering commitment to the music that truly defined her legacy. We bring you heartbreaking news from the world of entertainment. Hawaiian actor Taylor Wiley, best known for his roles in Hawaii 50 and Magnum P.I., has passed away at the age of 56. I'm joined by our entertainment correspondent, Lena Girl Lange, who has the details. Lena, it's a somber day for fans of Taylor Wiley, the actor who portrayed the lovable character Kamakona Tupuola on Hawaii 50, left us unexpectedly on June 20, 2024. His manager confirmed that he died of natural causes. Wiley's journey from sumo wrestler to Hollywood star was nothing short of remarkable. Born and raised in Hawaii, Taylor Wiley initially made a name for himself as a sumo wrestler. However, knee injuries forced him to leave the sport in the late 1980s. Undeterred, he transitioned to the world of film and television. His infectious charm and talent caught the attention of casting directors, leading to his iconic role as Kamakona. Tributes have poured in from colleagues and fans alike. Peter Lenkov, executive producer of both Hawaii 50 and Magnum PI, expressed his devastation on Instagram. He reminisced about Wiley's first audition, where the actor walked in with a towel on his head, mopping up sweat. Lenkov was smitten and made Wiley a regular on the show, and in his life. You were family, he wrote, and I will miss you every day, brother. Despite his diverse credits, Taylor Wiley considered Hawaii 50 his dream job. It's the best job in the world, he once said. You get to play Hollywood, but be right here in Hawaii. Home. His portrayal of Kaakona endeared him to viewers worldwide, and his legacy will live on through the screen. We remember a remarkable talent who graced both stage and screen. Lala Matsakinian, an honored artist of Armenia, passed away on June 22, 2024, leaving behind a legacy that will forever resonate in the hearts of her fans. Lala Matsakinian was born in Yerevan, Armenia Tessa on October 8, 1957. She was the third and youngest daughter in her family, with a mother who was an associate professor of stage speech and a father who was a mathematician. Throughout her career, Lala played diverse roles in theaters across Armenia. From the Yerevan Youth Experimental Theater to the Van Anzer State Drama Theater, she captivated audiences with her talent and versatility. Her performances in classics like Servant of Two Masters, Uncle Vanya, and the Three Penny Opera showcased her ability to breathe life into every character she portrayed. But Lala wasn't just an actress, she was also a dedicated professor. For over three decades, she taught stage speech at the Yerevan State Institute of Theater and Cinematography. Her impact on aspiring actors was immeasurable. Today, we bid farewell to Lala Metsakayan, a true legend. Her passion, dedication, and artistry will continue to inspire generations to come. Peter Bratzman, the heart and lungs of European free jazz, has left us. He died peacefully at his home in Wuppertal, Germany, on June 22, 2024, at the age of 82. His brash, tempestuous saxophone outpourings set an imposing standard for free improvisation, and his legacy will forever resonate with music lovers worldwide. Bratzman burst onto the scene in the late 1960s with his self-released album, For Adolphus Sax, but it was his seismic work, Machine Gun, that truly shook the jazz world. Released in 1968, it became an anthem of protest against the Vietnam War. Brat's man's sound could be gruff and garrulous or knife-like and squalling, always with a ferocious commitment to the moment at hand. Peter was a force of nature. His saxophone wailed like a hurricane, tearing through conventions and leaving us breathless. Brat's man's music was a reflection of the times, violent, passionate, and unyielding. He channeled the chaos of the 60s into his art. Born into wartime Germany, Bratzmann found his freedom of expression through music. He collaborated with avant-garde artists, including drummer Han Benink and pianist Misha Mengelberg. His legacy extends beyond the notes he played. It's a testament to resilience, creativity, and the pursuit of truth. We remember a true pioneer in the world of television. Russell Morash, the creator of This Old House, and a driving force behind how the television has passed away.
His legacy will forever shape the way we learn and engage with the world around us. Russell Morash was more than just a producer. He was an innovator at the core. Born in 1936, he grew up in Lexington, Massachusetts and later graduated from Boston University. But it was his work at GBH that truly defined his career. Over 65 years ago, I was hired as a camera operator at GBH. But then, we had a little incident. A studio fire. That's when everything changed. Morash launched not only this old house, but also the long-running gardening show, The Victory Garden. He brought the audience into experts' kitchens and laboratories, breaking away from the traditional TV studio format. But perhaps Morash's most significant collaboration was with the legendary Julia Child. It all started with a phone call. That was the first time Morash and Julia spoke. Together, they created The French Chef, where Julia taught us how to cook. Russ realized she was not just an author, she was captivating on camera. And then came this old house. In 1979, Morash launched this iconic series, taking viewers through home renovations, step by step. It wasn't just about fixing houses, it was about empowering people to tackle their own projects. Russell Morash became the founding commanding father of the How to Genre Educational Television. His impact is immeasurable.